Welcome back to the 2018 Academy League. Three games down, two more to go as we gear up for our next match between 100 Thieves and FlyQuest. 100 Thieves continue to stay afloat, holding the line until Levi joins the roster. And they've done a pretty good job of doing that, all things considered. Uh, Ricardo and Wyang continue to be the rock of this team, and we saw them put up a real carry performance versus yeah. Clutch Gaming last week, which was good to see, and they showed us a glimpse of the prowess that they kind of had last year in the Challenger Series. Absolutely, but they do have a tough match against FlyQuest who are hot off a win over Cloud9 and are coming, welcoming, I should say, Keen and Shrimp back to the lineup. Yeah, Peck and Wolf had done a really good job as a substitute mid laner for FlyQuest Academy, and we'll see if Keen can kind of keep up what he had been doing after some lackluster performances in the LCS. Similarly, while Shrimp wasn't very successful in his LCS games as Onda had been, uh, he and Keen at least have been playing together for a really long time, so their synergy hopefully will be on full display for this game. And we will have to see what that synergy is between all the team members as we get into the rosters. On the blue side, it is 100 Thieves. The synergy between the top lane of Kaizen, Kitsuo roaming around in the jungle, Lin Sanity locking down the mid lane with Rakira, Rakara, sorry, in the bot lane and support Wyan. And loading in on the red side for this game, it is Fly Quest Academy. Up in the top lane, we have no or not. In the jungle, we have Shrimp. Uh, in the mid lane is Keen. In the bot lane with Aries supported by JJ. And the JJ, there they are. Hey, there Beautiful they are. faces on the screen. Why don't you shoot again? No shrimp and uh, Keen. Keen, yeah. Ari and JJ yeah, so, in uh, the mid lane. Yeah, some, uh, some other faces in there, not quite. That's why, right. but it shows you the transition that the team has been going through, trying to get actually Fly Fly on the main roster as he comes over, and then having Keen, who wasn't doing well in the LCS, but now kind of putting the... Uh, the danger back into four teams in the Academy League. He was playing well yesterday. Oh, yeah. He was, what we said, 10-1-5 or something like that. He had a monster performance on Corky. Uh, and he's a player that tends to be a little streaky. Both him and Shrimp kind of have that, that, that is true. tendency. And that's that's one of the problems that they had on Dignitas last year when they you know finished number four, yep. had a tremendous end to the regular season. They're stomping everybody. And then playoffs come around. They beat... C9 very convincingly, <laughs> they get smashed by TSM, and they, they have this, this inability to kind of play up to the same level every day. We'll see what level both teams are at. A five and two FlyQuest Academy, and a three and four. 100 Thieves looking to steal another win here. And Nunu, Narzi. Yeah, I was gonna say the Azir ban, uh, a little surprising, kind of, I think what most people would say is Keen's signature champion at this point in his career. Long gone are the days of Hecarim mid. So I wish we still had That's those. so true. I miss it. Keen was the man to do that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. I always had a weird eye for what could work. Rise taken out there. Definitely Lin Sanity hits. Lin Sanity not having the greatest games for himself. I have a few late game kind of good positioning fights, a few impact plays that really do affect the game. But overall, I feel like targeting him definitely kind of hurts the early game where he falls behind a little bit. Yeah, for sure. And I think uh, Ricara is going to perform no matter what, so you don't need too many yeah. AD carry bands. So they slap one more mid lane one in there. And kind of continuing the trend of early pick Camille's. Might see another one. Why not? Third one in the, the day. I don't know the first game well enough, but we've had GP versus Camille. We've had a Kali versus Camille. Hey, we did a Kali Camille. Right, we'll have to see what this is as Camille yeah. is getting locked in. Who would you like to see in the top lane? Carry versus carry matchup, Riv. Carry versus carry. Yeah, don't yeah. don't tell me you want to see GP or Nar. What do I want to see? I mean, I want to see Cannon, but that's not a matchup you want to go into. <laughs> you just get jumped on and die. Oh yeah. well, we'll see. Ezreal, see if they can pick better than I can, because I would have just lost the champion select. <laughs> Ezreal and Sejuani picked up for FlyQuest Academy here, as 100 Thieves look to answer for the first phase. Yep, and Shrimp on. Tanks, it's, it's always weird. It's its not really what you anticipate matching his play style since he loves to go for those kind of big gamble, mm -hmm. level two ganks, super hard camp one side, you know, sit in, sit in a river brush for 30 seconds, and uh, that's what you expect to see generally with the Jarvan. So a little surprising to see the uh, Sejuani come in there and kiss with him for 100 Thieves is going to grab the Jarvan instead. Maybe hopping into the fights. What do you get, Linsanity? Will you take yours or will you find the AD carry so Ricard doesn't get pushed off? They still decide to choose it. Tristan can still match up in the top side here for FlyQuest. Uh, I personally would enjoy seeing a carry or something, you know, go Lowey. I don't know, yeah. go go something fun here. Uh, GP has not been banned yet, so I expect if they don't grab it here, that'll get banned. I'm sure FlyQuest is thinking something similar. 
I'm gonna go with the orange. Oh, a supporty orange, maybe? Or Ooh. top. I don't mind the idea of a flex support orange. Yeah. Here. Keep yeah. guessing a little bit. Absolutely. Also, you kind of just tank out a lane versus Camille. No problem there. Yeah, Maybe that's fun. boring. <laughs> you don't say. No surprise to see the Braum ban right away. It's a very strong uh, counter pick into it come the mid to late game portions. One of Orin's greatest strengths is his engage range and the frequency with which you can do it. Well, what, nothing better to beat it out than like a 15, 10 second cooldown yeah. shield that's going to break it apart. So no surprise that that ban is in there. Terret comes out. Make that tanky comp on FlyQuest Academy. Not survive any longer if they can help it. Then it will be answered with a Galio. So we're getting a little beef here in the end of the game, getting taken out. Probably another support. I'm just hoping it's a support. Maybe they're like, if we ban enough supports, we'll either flex that to support just because they have to. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, the Galio ban makes a fair amount of sense given that we see the uh, J4 locked in and don't want to have to potentially play against that combination, especially when you factor in a Camille that is uh, an insane amount of lockdown that people can't get out of. It is interesting. You play against Camilles a lot, but you kind of don't. And I think a lot of people still freak out when it happens. You kind of just have to wait and hope your team's there to get into the Hextech with you after it's been hit. Yeah, it's, it's very much a panic moment. When it is. Like, no it one's is. near me anymore. <laughs> oh, save me, save me. Hopefully do that by headbutting Camille away. LSR gets locked in for JJ. Final two picks here in phase two for 100 Thieves. Looking for a mid laner, looking for support. It looks like they weren't sure what they wanted to ban. Very, very last second of LeBlanc yeah. pops up. Oh, wow. Not the most particularly uh, popular champion right now. And that Orn does flex up to the top side. So 100 Thieves Academy are going to know that is Camille versus Orn. Not too bad for Orn, all things considered, that W uh, making it kind of hard for Camille at some points. And the Tom Kench, everyone's favorite support, right? That, that was a big time. That off. didn't look forced at all when you... <laughs> With the smile. Yeah, and everything. Still need their mid laner, Oriana. I actually like this. I've been waiting to see a little bit more Ori lately. Well, then Sandy keep himself safe, keep the protection on the carry, or, or that carry being uh, Rikara or even Kaizen in this case for the Jarvan Ultimate Delivery. So Keem, what do you got for us in the mid lane? We know him to have quite a gigantic champion pool. Not too much AP on the team already. That Corky's back in the mix. We saw him on it yesterday and he's gonna lock it in once again. Uh, I got all my hopes up with all the hovers. I know, right? I was, I was looking for something aggressive. Ends up going with the Corky. Mostly gonna be a farm out lane now in the mid lane. He does have the package and Keem can be known to be an aggressive player at points. So maybe he gets a little trigger happy with that one. Uh, but I really do like 100 Thieves Academy's comp. They have a lot of engage. They have Oriana to support that engage. You can find wombo combos. Also works well if uh, Rikara becomes your main threat. You can have the shields and speed ups to make that Tristana go nuts in late game situations. So lots of options for them how to play that game out, not only in the early game, but in the late game as well. Ignites to start things off for the bot side. We will keep an eye on the aggression as that comes around. 100 Thieves or I should say 100A win, or fly A win with those has hashtags and compositions on your screen. Mark, what are we looking for? Kind of 100 Thieves Academy. Do they wait it out, set up Oriana objectives, or should we see Kitsuo and Kaizen taking this game straight to top and to the next? You would think top would be a focus, but it's kind of hard into Orin. He's, he's tanky, he's got a lot of defensive tools available to him. You know, Oriana is not necessarily the best roamer, and even though there's True. a lot of true potential for snowballing topside in this meta i don't think this is necessarily one of those games that's too easy to do it because you probably would want a three-man dive that that orange so uh you might not see as much top lane focus as you would think maybe some mid lane focus maybe uh some bot lane focus but flyquest have a, a very kind of sturdy comp in some ways where there's there's nothing that's that exploitable anywhere four watches yeah Grimp missed out no one told him no one told him He's like, that's what we do on Academy. Oh, dang. Didn't get invited. I missed that meeting. To the party. <laughs> Three on the other side. Not a minion team materializer. Thought that would be a little weird. Here's one on Tom Kench. He has yes, some, uh, there is. Minions have spawned. Some of those. Someone can make a champion dematerializer. <laughs> Just a little bit more research. Get a little bit more funding for whoever. It's kind of like a Valkaz. It'd be like a Valkaz. <laughs> yeah. It'd be a Valkaz item. You research. Get another level of damage. No, back to help on the red buff. We'll see the bot lane start. Actually, no, top lane start as well on the side of Kitsuo and Kaizen. They'll be doing blue. 
and we'll get junglers matching each other throughout this start. Hopefully we get the, some aggression down the bot side then, some level two all in. Yeah. All right, that's almost telling. Jungler, bot lanes are here. You guys are farming right away. Jungler started top. So a little information given out around the map. Yeah, See both goes. Both top should communicate to their teams, hey, this guy showed up right when I did, and I was <laughs> leeching, so maybe he was leeching. Or he was watching, you know, friends. So it looks like that's a quick clear. They'll be even, though. Level 2 probably isn't going to be too heavy in this bot side. It's will just be eaten up right quick if Lion feels her car is in any trouble. And JJ will just headbutt people away. Easier said than done, though. Can always mess up. Kitsuo to red. Good timing as blue is happening on the side of Shrimp. Junkers are pacing quite well. Yeah, Shrimp seems like he's a little bit ahead. Has that fleet footwork. Make sure he doesn't want to get too low. Pretty common to see that on Sichuani, especially in yeah. matchups where you might get invaded on. As we see Kitsuo already over the wall. Mm -hmm. I will take Scuttle first. It'll be good control. No. Quickly just pushing up his lane as much as possible. Love to keep Volcanic Rupture under the turret and just harass the heck out of Kaizen so he can't get this lane to fight in. No, we're gonna have to keep good wards though. Always difficult when you gotta fight a long lane against somebody that can trap you in like Kitsuo. There, Kitsuo was spotted on Scuttle Crab. Shrimp ping that one out. Good vision control. Also, I think this is our first Infernal Dragon of the day, so we might see some early fighting over that one. It's real spicy here towards the late game, or I should say late day. Just three minutes in. Doesn't look like we've had any counter jungle to start things off. A little prior in the day, but Kaizen feels comfortable. Just a few caster minions on the backside will still make a trade in his favor to start things off here. Now we have Smite. Smite, yeah, I just yeah. saw that too. I not I don't remember seeing that on the red buff if he used it or not. I'm gonna assume he did, but I definitely right. noticed it at the time. Um, you know, that's why. Probably your best summoner with regards to pushing. If you want to keep the Camille kind of locked in for a little bit, you just smite the cannon creep, gives you a big advantage on yep. pushes. Uh, I'm assuming that's what he's been doing. I haven't seen him go for an invade yet, so. Shrimp showing no interest in game. He just wants power farm. So. Assault, blast over the wall, and into Krugs. Go, go, go. Just missed, though. So Kaizen gets that ward down. That actually means Shrimp knows there's a ward there, and he can nicely take a different path to lane. Good info for him. Also farming out. Good for 100 Thieves that they, uh, or I guess good for Fly Quest 100 Thieves didn't see him to know that he's still right. farming. Could be down the bot side, could be anywhere right now. So, a little bit of vision control advantage. Getting on to mid. Said, I believe we can hit Keem with something hard. Maybe a, a level six is coming up here for Kitsuo, or I should say Lin Sanity with Kitsuo on the side, but they will back off of the situation. Look towards top right now. No, not too far pushed out. So we're just going to give wards to Kaizen. Looks like they're saying, Kaizen, push. We want you to control that lane. Could be a bit of a slow early game. Like yep. you said, despite 100 Thieves having a fair amount of aggressive tools, none of FlyQuest is easily exploitable. <laughs> Expect something probably around bot side with that Infernal Dragon, maybe around Corky Package timing a little bit later into the game. Corky Package timing kind of comes up around Lockets as well, or Stopwatch as well. Interesting little interaction. It's true. We have like another minute or so. See if anybody keeps those windows in mind. Keen looks like he's out of mana. He'll have to back after he takes a quick Raptor camp for himself. Or a few Raptors, I should say. Back for him. What up? Just like kind of a wet noodle fest. Like Kaizen's taking damage only because he's been standing in the middle of this damage. It hasn't been too much just yet. I'm sure No will have some very early. Kitsuo looking dangerous, but I was wondering if Keen was going to get hit by Lin Sanity on the back. Still fives here, so it doesn't really initiate too much of a fight in a level four. Kitsuo just kind of flexing his muscles. Yeah, getting a nice damage trade. Mm -hmm. uh, chunk out 100 Thieves. Uh oh, JJ. A little it's a licking and keeps on ticking. Nice hit back there to get the stun onto Rikara. JJ kind of staying in the situation to know he'll get out with more health. Yeah, I had to flash right then because yep. one more. The boom. Kiwi can get stunned. Also, I believe the Devour was up, so maybe could have gotten nommed up there. I mean, Tom Kench can get kind of scary. He actually does a ton of damage when he gets that Devour down on yeah. him. So. Understandable flash there. Did he get the Ignite out of Wyan? So small trade of summoners, but advantage to 100 Thieves. 
Back to the mid, finally level sixes. Good command dissonance in from Linsanity. It's pretty heavy on the mana pool though. You can't do that too much. You won't be able to take a full fight in lane. Ah, ties it straight to the face and no. Uses that shield to get out nicely. What a passive to be able to use in that as well. Knowing no can't really, you don't really retaliate as a, an Orn. Usually you start the fight and end it. The yeah. retaliation usually isn't in your favor. No, and so small, small, Gold lead for FlyQuest Academy, seemingly mostly off the jungle pathing. Like we said, Shrimp kind of went for that super hard farming route, was able to seal away a camp or two. Uh, so he has a nice 300 gold advantage for himself. And uh, also going to have a small scaling advantage. So nice start to the game for FlyQuest Academy here. And it's nice to see Shrimp going for a little bit more consistent of a game plan, yeah. given what Living Steady is known for. Gets back in here with Keen. No, Keen can have a solid lane. If he has a solid jungle, that's a lot of power to come out in the mid game with. Keep things safe. Seems to be the story of today. Ooh, just on the edge. Great fingers by Linsanity there to get the flash out. Yeah, really nice reaction time. Shrimp also committed this flash to try and cut 400 units of our distance off of a. Uh, not gonna say it was a waste, but it was probably a waste. Uh, you know, that's why you see a lot of. Sejuani's just go for the Q-Alt combination. Right. But hey, you get the flash out of the mid laner. Wait for that ultimate to come back up. Get a repeat gank in a little bit. Makes it pretty easy. Looks like Keen can stay with the mana he has now. At least charge up a bit. Maybe even get the package on the next roundabout if it does spawn. Still waiting for Kaizen to make himself huge. He looks happy in this lane. Oh, he could make himself into dust here in a second. Hextech ultimatum to dodge out on the Forge God. One last kick to come through, and the flash from No gets himself to safety, but what an interaction from Kaizen. Yeah, nice play there. I thought he was going to be in trouble. Ended yeah. up jumping out, like you said, of that ultimate by Orin. Also jumped out of the E. Uh, no was kind of layering his TC, I believe. Uh, and he ended up dodging two cooldowns for the price of one there. Tough to get him with a big hot fur ball. Did not happen. I, don't, I also don't know why Horn has fur in his throat. Weird comment. Yeah, licking <laughs> the, uh, the... Just a lot of... Camille has a lot of hair. She sheds... Whatever. Great. Fantastic. 13.9 <laughs> across the board as we come up on 10 minutes. Rakara has been rocket jumping forward all willy-nilly. Feels good to get into these engages with Aerie and JJ. Not a whole lot of damage from that lane when you can just keep locking them down with the explosive shot. Also has that kind of safety card of uh, the Tom Kent. You can jump in oh, there, get a little crazy, and then... Save me! Yeah. Have to be careful for us now, Star, though, because he's got the uh, the pulverized headbutt back. Right. Kind of separate you guys. That always feels bad. I'm coming, I promise. Let's get headed away. JJ trying to grab brush control, double wards for them. 94 to 85, still farming well as you'd expect. Tristana sometimes falling behind with that passive shot, killing out a few minions. Zeros across the board, still no kills. We've only seen a few back and forths here. Not really anything to take someone down. Keen, Insanity, still farming out as we expect. Yeah, this used to be a little bit more quirky favorite of a matchup. Nerfs came in, doesn't quite have the, the yeah as much bullet potential still generally out pushes the matchup which is why when you get that package you can maybe start finding some plays on the map uh, but it doesn't look like he's going to be able to do anything quite yet bot lane is just trading wet noodle fights why did i think package was like eight minutes have i not seen corky in that long uh i think it used to be eight minutes it might be oh, good job rip good job Jitsu, a little issue there. Throws out the ult with the stun, actually, first, and then the ult. Gets a nice hit and pushes Kitsu out of the jungle. This could be a dragon coming up if they can get that aggression bot lane, and they do. Yeah, nice trade out there. Not actually able to get any summoners, but the HP advantage will be all that they need to actually win over this infernal dragon. Unless 100 Thieves are going to take a risky contest, but with Kitsu backing in the jungle there, I don't think that's going to be the case. Pretty big uh, objective to take away here. Yeah, Lin Sanity too low on mana. Figured he could come down and throw something silly out. But Keen full, everybody else full. And very nice job, as you said. FlyQuest doing that. Oh! Gets out of one, but you gotta remember there's a secondary part to it. And Kaizen is gonna get knocked down by No. He played that fight a lot different and gets taken down. 
Yeah, ends up not actually dodging out on the uh, the ram at all. So that's the big portion that he yeah. can take. The knock up has the brittle on him. That leads to a big damage chunk that No can get once he ends up ulting on top of him. And this time he held his E, so he was able to put that down once the uh, Hextech ultimatum came in. So taking a look at how that fight started. Kaizen just losing out on the trade. All the Forge God comes through and then ults right away, holds his E. Nice combination there, Ooh. finishes him off. And like we we're saying, you know, Orin's no joke against melee matchups, man. He can win a lot of those. So was close to winning the first all yeah. in. Lost his stopwatch during that, but he's built up his first major item in the Iceborne Gauntlets. And now Camille on the back foot. Yeah, counters are not working anymore. Or attacks aren't working anymore. In and out. It's that start fight, end fight for Orin already. <laughs> Yeah, so we have to see if maybe Kitsuo starts going up there. Shrimp continuing. <laughs> you have no mana. What are you doing, Lin Sanity? He'll be fine. He'll get this. Board. Just a little bit of flexion from Shrimp as he heads in and out. They do get an idea of where Kitsuo is, though. Saying he's on that top side of the map. Bottom push as hard as you can. Get some damage on that turret. And I will start to deny bot side resources. 83 to 67, as we said, Shrimp in that consistency. Keeping it on the jungle for now to make sure his fights are really big. And the bot lane kind of winning on their own now. We've seen a couple times that they've chunked them out. Now they're getting massive turret damage down here. Looks like this first one's going to fall pretty soon here. I don't know if I heard the package noise, but... Ta -da. Hopefully he can get a push down the bot side, or in the mid lane, then roam down to the bot side. They have pretty good vision control. And there you see on his mini-map, starting to make his way down. Shrimp down there as well. Kitsuo trying to cover. They have to know. This turret's so low, and they're staying. Kitsuo maybe kind of give him that false sense of security. But they say, yeah, too much, uh, too many missing members, I should say. And they back off. It's funny, though. They back off, you back off. They're like, wait, we could have stayed. Silly little situation. They also have a, a TP advantage up in the top side. So 100 yeah, thieves are definitely going to lose this turret any minute now. <laughs> There's the back and forth. That's what's favoring Kaizen a bit. He hits no, gets out. As long as he doesn't stay too long, that's in his favor. Oh! Heal on the rocket. Nicely done by Keen. Just frustrating Kitsuo every step <laughs> of the way now. Forces flash out. He tests his blue buff, steals his red buff. Getting in counter jungles. Shrimp is kind of putting on a little bit of a jungling display against Kitsuo thus far. There's the dodge. That's what Kaizen wants to see. But still, the shields for Orn, the top up for Orn, keeping himself nice and tanky. There's a blue buff on to Lin Sanity. This is going to be a lot of damage, not much for Keen, but the auto attacks could seal the deal for one. And it looks like he is, might go through the Abyssal Voyage. He does. For some reason, I thought that was the opponent's. And he was just going ham doggy on this one. But Keen's going to go down. A nice assist coming in from Wyan. Quick Abyssal Voyage to the top. Uh, a bit of a misplay there by Keen. Yeah getting sold out by the Orion. Also hands over red buff to her, so going to be pretty happy about that. Good call. Entire team was recalling during that time as well after taking the bot turret, so no one was really in range to support. He was all left alone there, tried his best to stall, but it's kind of a long walk from base to get to a stop to watch court. That it is. That it is. Where is Aerie? He's in mid, charging up. I'm looking at him. Look at the mini-map. He's right in the center of the screen. <laughs> Charging up. Had his... an Alistar icon on top. Yeah, of it. exactly. He started up that man immune still. Uh, almost having his Mur amount of probably here within the next few minutes to start delivering some more of that poke damage. Ward clearing for Fly Quest Academy here as they head up. Rift Herald would be pretty sweet for someone to grab as no turrets. I should say no. One turret on the bot side fell, but nothing in the middle towards the top. We'll have to see what Fly Quest Academy choose to do with their lane assignments. Corky is a champion that does decent in side lanes, and Oriana does struggle a little bit, so maybe they go for something where they split them off. Uh, looks like Corky's actually on the way down, wants to use this first package on Kaizen. Almost one, gets the secondary, and it just is not working out for Kaizen anymore. Another kill picked up by No, the assist key. This one's risky too, because they will get this bottom turret unless someone comes down, but assuredly FlyQuest make a play somewhere else right. on the map. They can go for the Rift Herald, they can push up on the top side, so it looks like 100 Thieves are instead choosing to just stack this in inner turret. Stacking area as well, 20 CS towards that top side in favor of him. Shrimp gonna be in a real bad spot here for a moment. Gets the flash out Cataclysm underneath as we see Kitsuo going very hard to the fight. Lin Sanity getting himself to safety. With that shockwave down, they can't do too much more to the fight, and they do take down Shrimp. Yeah, JJ is bloodthirsty. He was like, you know what, yeah. Shrimp? 
I'll trade your life out to try and get a kill. Headbutts Kitsuo under the turret, but that puts him in range for the Cataclysm. Gets the kill, flashes out, so Kitsuo lives and gets a shrimp for it. Not too bad considering Camille was uh, dead in base when that all started. Yeah, very true. See where they head out from here. Top lane being pushed by Aerie still. He'll get a lot of pressure onto the turret, and we'll see one more time mid lane play. So nice pullback onto Shrimp, get him low, and then uh, he gets headbutted into the turret as Shrimp kind of threw his ultimate there. So a bit of a whiff. After the pulverize, JJ probably should have headbutt him away. Maybe Ki or, uh, excuse me, Kitsuo commits the flash cataclysm, but uh, would have rather have seen that. Get himself out. Yeah, then he doesn't have the flash to get out exactly. Indeed. I like it. He's just said than done. We'll see if he does it next time. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, <laughs> hindsight 2020. Just have to wait the five minutes. Oh boy, no flashes or Valkyrie there. Nice call, the Forge God gets it back, but it only sets up 100 Thieves to say, who's our next target in this fight? It's gonna be no! He goes down immediately. What a shield onto Wyan. Holy crap, I'm holy. He puts on the hard skin. Nothing was taking him down, and they continue down to the Drake. They're gonna be able to get themselves the first, second Inferno of the game, I should say. Very important that they win that fight to stop FlyQuest from being able to stack these. But Wyan still hanging around. Wyan baiting! Oh, it's almost a very good bait. Very kind of touch and go there, but he gets himself to safety as Infernal is picked up by 100 Thieves to even up the Drake. Good decision by Aerie not to go and get baited yeah. by that Tom Kench. Uh, and you see how 100 Thieves comp is actually very powerful uh, despite kind of being behind a little bit. Uh, the Jarvan is able to combine with the Orianna. They have good synergy. Keen just kind of walks up a little bit too far, gets pulled out of his Valkyrie, chains CC down. And then they have a, a pretty uh, aggressive team comp with the Camille being able to come in as well. Focus down, no. Without the uh, the Corky there, there's just not enough damage on the side of FlyQuest Academy. It's basically three tanks and an Ezreal. So they're able to win that one pretty convincingly. Nice split fight as well. That actually had all vision for the three members that were standing in that brush. So they kept disappearing for FlyQuest Academy. Makes it hard to fight when you can't see. Yeah, not auto attacking. <laughs> Makes it difficult. See how much vision they can deny now towards the top side of the map. Rift Herald has about a minute left. A little less than a minute left. I don't think anybody's going to put enough pressure on that. The wards are there to possibly spark a fight. But it looks like it'll be laning here for the 80 carries as we've swapped it all towards the top side. 100 Thieves still looking for their first turret as well. So they yeah. have some gold to make up. But they at least evened up the dragon count. And it's pretty good on 100 Thieves comp uh, since, you know, you have Camille actually building attack damage values that are going to scale versus Orn, who's pretty much just a big tank and doesn't really benefit from the bonus ADAP yep. quite as much. See the discrepancies in gold. We've got a thousand there for Aerie over as well. A few turrets they've been able to take down with a bit of extra farming gold. 207 to 192 as he's been to the side lanes first. The FlyQuest Academy kind of on the ball in their movements. 100 Thieves trying to deny a bit here. You can see how tentative FlyQuest wants in. They say, we'll take those wards, but we really just want to pressure you to make sure we can get this turret without losing too much. Safe play. Yep, safe play. Baron is up. Neither team is a fantastic Baron team, so probably going to be a little while before we see that really as a, an option for either team. And, uh, oh, interrupted the uh, hook shot, or maybe missed. True. May not have pulled her along, but also got that. Searing charge in, he'll be out, she'll be out. And everybody gets the safety. No feeling good about those trades though overall as they start happening now again at 20 minutes in. Bot lane is his and is pushing forward. We'll see if the teleport is up for Kaizen, it is, but that can be interrupted. Gotta kind of tip your cap to uh, FlyQuest side lanes this game because uh, that's really where almost all the advantages come from. FlyQuest bot lane was just winning on their own, forced that turret down very low and got that as the first turret of the game. Top lane got a solo kill, so that's pretty impressive. And Keen's kind of been the uh, the straggler this game, which is a little disheartening coming from LCS back down here, getting uh, killed twice. So it's got to step it up a little bit. They still have the gold lead, but they have to be careful because, like we said, 100 Thieves comp is very good at team fighting. Yep. Keen's game yesterday, very good, but he definitely had a few troubles in those early games. Was playing against Italia, got pushed around, did require a little help to get his health back in lane control. Here, it doesn't seem like it swung that way, and as you said, 
be the weak point so far, 21 minutes in. Farming away, still has his turret. So he'll have a good amount of waves to soak up there if the game doesn't come to his his lane too soon. 34 to 36, like we were saying, FlyQuest has that lead here. I think they're happy to farm. They're getting airy pretty big right now. And he is gonna be poking out this fight a lot. But there is Rakara on Tristana. Once 100 Thieves reaches these turrets, they're gonna be dropping. Right. Once they reach the turrets. Once they reach the turrets, <laughs> yeah, Tristana might get a little crazy. As of right now, on two item power spikes, you obviously have to favor the Ezreal a fair yep. amount, especially given what he's up against. Uh, mostly bruisers on the side of 100 Thieves versus pure tanks for FlyQuest. And Tristana with no armor pen yet, only sitting on the Static Shiv and Infinity Edge will have a yep. hard time chewing through the Warmog's Frozen Fist combination for no. Clear the heck out of those waves right now. That's true. Take him down. She is definitely, as you said, going to be hitting a brick wall when she tries to hit anything else, though, at this point. Unless it is a squishy shrimp. Just on the other side of Baron. Control is here. Just for a bit of warding. Nobody really wants to do this right now. It's a little scary. Not really a threat right now. I wouldn't mind seeing Wyan trying to find some uh, ultimates on top of people. The Tom Kench has been relatively quiet this game. The most he's done is kind of save Rakara. Kind of forced to flash in the bot lane. I mean, yeah, you have two to do it with. It's, you don't say. They're going to head towards the top side. Abyssal Warriors just behind the team of FlyQuest Academy. Very nice ball delivery for the Cataclysm. They get that hit in, but they go instantly back towards Linsanity. That's Nose position. Saved by Wyan, and now they're going to lose Kaizen. Or Kitsuo, I should say. Kaizen's still up. He's running for safety. The teleport was in there, and a lot of movement for 100 Thieves to get to that fight, but they're not able to come up with it. Yeah, it was just a little too disjointed with that right. engage. The Tom Kench came in, no one was with him. They kited it out, and very nicely played by FlyQuest to stay alive. Now with no jungle, they're doing this Baron, but there is still four left alive. Tactical sweep. Gets himself in with the Hextech ultimatum to kind of deny, disturb, disrupt but it's still shrimps. He gets the smite down. He's good to go. And that is going to be Keen picking up a kill. Answered in by Lin Sanity. But it's not going to be enough. This is when Keen starts to get a bit more powerful and possibly a triple kill here. And that Whoa. will be his as he picks up Wyan. Suddenly Keen catapults himself and, to 3, 2, and 2. And suddenly Keen. A bit of a risky force there by FlyQuest Academy. But no one was able to join Kaizen on diving the back line. Yeah. He's able to uh, get kited out by Aerie, who still had his stopwatch available. And with Teal kept himself alive. They kill him. And Lin Sanity did find the cleanup kill on him, but had to put himself too far forward, which then gives Keen the opportunity to find a couple more kills. So huge play out of FlyQuest, punishing that engage by 100 Thieves way before the Baron. And after that, they grab a couple turrets for themselves as well. Huge monies. Money bags. Solo for Keen there. Solo for No, but also the gold to the rest of the team as we see this one more time. And so Kitsuo is already dead. Kaizen goes in the back line, solos out Airy. I like the idea. Yeah, so it's a nice idea, but Wyan doesn't really join in with him. He's right. kind of just running in circles near the front line. Would have been nice if he could have tried to get a little bit of help with that carry. And instead, they don't get anything. When Sanity, like we said, does walk forward and finish off Airy, but he has to give up his own life to do so. And he barely finds a Tom Kench at the end. And a Drake. Look at these guys, all over the map. Infernal with a bit of speed now on top of that. It looks like they will have a bit more speed with a Cloud Drake. Up next, 6,000 gold lead, but six to six. You just have to look at those turrets on the map, where they're getting their gold from. Absolutely absurd right now. It only means 100 Thieves has a lot of gold, right? That's what we always say. Oh yeah. But I don't think they're gonna reach it anytime soon here. Confident push-ups, confident warding, and protecting those wards are what FlyQuest is all about here. Yeah, and it's a little scary because 100 Thieves, they can play decently with enemy teams diving onto them with the Tristana and Orianna kind of kiting back, but they have to be ready for it. Gotta be careful if you're alone at a turret with this team. We saw exactly what was going on in that pick band selection. No, going down here a little too close to the turret, and they're gonna lose Orn as they start a top lane fight. I was just about to mention, we saw it was interesting. Keen banned out that Azir, but Azir would prevent everything that FlyQuest Academy is trying to do right now. So that ban paying off. Yeah, and Keen, a little bit far forward there. Yeah. Uh, but it was it was surprising to see No drop that quickly after that engage. 
Kitsuo went really far ahead of his team, but it ended up working out. Kit, uh, no had no way out, so they get that one kill back. Did manage to keep their turret up as well. Yep. So a good stall out with the bear and only 45 seconds left on it. Baron makes you do crazy things, man. So you think you're a lot stronger than you are. A lot of times you are. <laughs> but usually you are. But usually you are. But that is what gets you killed, too. Yep, and so they did get a lot of work done on these turrets. They'll probably be able to grab them a little bit later, but unfortunately not going to be able to snowball that one into any inhibitor turrets or anything. Forky pushing top. FlyQuest Academy getting a bit of the split going here. Kaizen possibly over the wall. He has area in his eyes, but it will be shrimp that he hits. What a great beat wall. JJ is going to do the same thing. And No gets himself a teleport to the mid lane on a minion just under the turret. They are really able to just jockey for position. Not even jockey, they're just kind of pushing around 100 Thieves right now in this position. Still not too bad for 100 Thieves, though. It's true, they're holding off. Yeah, they held off. They're able to keep the turret up. They got the teleport out of No. Uh, so I do like that force there. And with that, the Baron buff is going to time out. After that initial push with the Baron, when they got the kills, they grabbed two turrets, but didn't get any other since then. So not bad at all. Rakara, 3-0-0. Insanity, getting some power under his belt that he could do some damage with now at 3, 1, and 4. It's just that they can hit the right target. It's actually hard for Orion in these fights. You're going to have Ez on the back line, a few big guys diving you, so you know, it's really hard to actually get that group. Probably a little hesitation there for Insanity on the choice for all. I'm taking that uh, second guess. Yeah, it's hard for both teams because Kaizen and Kitsuo want to dive on to somebody, but yeah. Corky and Ezreal are pretty elusive, and then with the Sejuani, Alistair, and Orn, they have plenty of ways to kind of peel them off their carries, but at the same time, the big threats to take care of are Rikara and Linsanity, both at three and one, and being the main damage dealer. So, 100 Thieves can kind of throw their front line in and maybe buy enough space for Rikara and Linsanity to get damage in. But they are still 7,000 gold down, so there's a little bit of a pipe dream. Yeah. It's over the wall. I like it. Rikara still rocking the Doran's blade. Doesn't need to sell it off just yet. Let's see what they have now. Moving kind of spread out on the map. Obviously don't want to take any of these fights. And FlyQuest is using pretty good time to get in here. The rotation is quite far. Oh, Kaizen actually has teleport. They may want to take this. Headbutt goes in from the call of the Horde God, but nothing is activated. That would have been a great time to catch 100 Thieves. Yeah, a little bit of miscommunication there, I think. No shot the uh, Orn ultimate down, but there were some pings out afterwards onto Linsanity. And hold on, pings are question marks. Wyatt could be going down. Stopwatch there, Kids will locks them in. Rakara firing in, but it's like hitting brick walls for him right now. With the tanks on the side of FlyQuest Academy. 5v5, they spread parallel now to the mid lane, and it is going to be Lin Sanity taking the first damage. Wyatt gobbles up Kitsuo, keeps him alive as Keen finally finds himself a kill in a 1v1 that splits off to the Raptor pit. And now it's no on to Rikara. He finally goes down in the game. That's the full team shutdown on three kills, and FlyQuest come up very big. Yeah, as well as chunking out Lin Sanity. No one's left to defend this turret. Gonna be able to grab that objective on the tail end. All started with Wyatt wow. walking a little bit too far forward. They yep. might be able to track an inhibitor here as well. A few shots for Shrimp so the team can get themselves in. The minions will activate and demolish. Boom on the turret. Getting some good damage onto that. They want to follow up the fight. They want to try to end the game. They are instantly going to be taking down Kitsuo. He was just saved with a sliver of health from the fight. Wyatt's job never ends. Nope, had to choose who to save <laughs> yeah. there. The jungler or the uh, mid laner? Which one? Ooh, I wonder which life is more valuable. It's, it's the mid laner, guys. Save, save the three, one, and four mid lane. Oh, man, the choices. That's what you do. You got to put so much on the opposing team's plate that they can't make the right choice, even if you have one on either side of you. And JJ, bloodthirsty, leading his team to find another kill on wine, but loses his own life in response. Kitsuo is still dead for 10 seconds, so the Baron comes back up, and they're going to start this one away. Talk about not being a great Baron wow. team, but at this point, a very fed Corky and Ezreal will do plenty of damage to a Baron. Look at these Barons, they're so tiny compared to the earlier game. There's <laughs> like, yeah, the 12, 15k HP Baron. <laughs> a little less intimidating. There's a tiny Baron getting taken down there, but doing big things here for FlyQuest Academy. I almost said 100 Thieves, as they're just on the Baron side. 
But here, 31 minutes in, 10 to 8, and now an 11,000 gold lead mounted against 100 thieves. Gotta have some crazy ends. Airy has to explode. Keen has to explode. If they're alive for any portion of these fights, it is going to be a win for FlyQuest Academy. Yeah, Keen's absolutely massive now once again. Four items completed. Working on his Void Staff to make sure he keeps his damage up. Package ready and raring to go as he starts to take a split push to himself. A bit of a 1-3-1. One, one. Yeah, it will be. I was going to say Shrimp and AJ, or JJ to mid lane and push. But they'll probably join their team as they set up a bit of defense. JJ spread off. It doesn't look like they have any fight to engage here. He will be in trouble. Yeah, that's a little risky since no in an area pretty far behind. Yeah, I was like, you guys are a little confident here. He's Optical. also pretty far forward. You see there's a roam coming down from Linsanity, but he backs off. It's actually interesting interaction now with Corky as a package. If Teleport was up for Kaizen, he's now a champion that can disrupt that. It would be so uh, painful there for Kaizen. Teleport down. Can't make it happen anyways. He's forced to guard against Keen's damage. Wyan trying to get a tongue out, a few good licks here and there to acquire the right taste. But the game being spread right now is doing just that, spreading 100 Thieves way too thin to defend. Yeah, and Linsanity the air ball is ultimate there, trying to pick off Shrimp, and without that available, it's so much easier for FlyQuest to walk forward and attack that last inhibitor turret standing. Keen's also looks like he's gonna come up through the base to join in on this one, and it's just too easy to finish off this last turret. Oh, demolish. Coming up big, 33 minutes. Base being opened up now by FlyQuest Academy. Great control throughout the early part of the game, mid. And just great control from basically each one of the lanes with Keen having to play safe in the mid. Yeah, it seems like Keen needs to figure out his early game a little bit here. Two games with some pickups. Uh, didn't cost the team anything significant, yeah. but did slow the process down a little bit. And Kitsuo wants to go. They're trying to stall it out right here. Kitsuo saved in by the Devour. Oh, doesn't get the Grey Health in. Instantly taken down by the Glacial Prison. Keen in a bad spot here, but he's able to deliver and kite out enough. Not really kite, stand still and do the damage <laughs> in the Hextech Ultimatum. And they are just flowing forward relentlessly into the 100 Thieves base. They will take everything for themselves. As the turrets go down, the Nexus will be the last 50 gold someone sticks in their pocket on FlyQuest Academy. That'll be the game 13 to 8. FlyQuest pick up the victory over the 100 Thieves. Celebratory teleports. Come in as they finish off the Nexus. A pretty clean game from FlyQuest, all yeah. things considered. Minus a couple pickoffs in the mid lane. They were able to close that one out after their side lane started putting in a lot of work. Absolutely, and definitely a, uh, a learning process in the top lane. We saw the Camille Orn lane going back and forth. Didn't seem like No was having a great time. And then he was like, oh, I've, I've seen the, the fight with the ultimate. Now I know what to do in it. And he kept taking that to his own control. Yeah, once he got that first kill, he starts getting a gold lead. Yep. And he gets to complete his items faster, generally a little bit cheaper as well. And once he has that going for him, it's very hard for the Camille to match up. And he just took complete control of that game. And he was trying to do as much as he could in that Baron Pit fly 3-2 to two as we watch this replay here. What a hectic fight. But in goes... Kaizen on the top side doing what he can. Yeah, he knows he has to go pretty quickly here to make something happen before the Baron's just taken down for free. Drops Aerie, but he has the stopwatch still available. Also gets the heal in, stays alive. They're able to kite him out. And then as he walks forward, Linsanity gets that pick off, but everyone's going to go down. Wyan not really able to do much in that team fight. Maybe could have gone more aggressive, but he is a Tom Kench, not really known for his offensive damaging capabilities. Very true. Very true. And I want to call back as well uh, to that pick ban. We said Keen banning out Azir. That's weird. And Azir here would have slowed everything down. Yeah, and I think the, the Corky is a pick he generally looks good on. Like oh, we yeah. said, played it yesterday as well. Died once or twice. Maybe is a little too loose in the, the mid game, but he can clearly team fight with a champion as he always ends up with fantastic score lines once these start breaking out. Absolutely. And to hear more about that victory, I'd like to welcome JJ to the broadcast via Skype. JJ, welcome and congratulations on the game. Hey, thanks, guys. Absolutely. So, coming into this game, kind of what was the idea? It seemed like only go forward composition and it worked out great for you guys. Um, so yeah, going into the game, we knew that their bot lane was pretty strong and their mid laner was pretty strong, so we banned out a lot of mids. And then, as you see, we forced them on Ori, which isn't like the strongest of picks. And then from there, we figured we could win through mid lane and then just, yeah. 
So it didn't quite play out that way. Uh, you and Ari were pretty important for taking that bot lane turret. You guys had a lot of pressure down there, and you just said how good you thought their bot lane was. So was this what you would say, like, a game you're very happy with? You felt like you performed? Uh, Yeah, I feel like we had a slightly stronger 2v2 bot lane. And for sure, like, I think they might have misplayed a little bit, but we did play it uh, well, and we got a lot of pressure on them, and then we ended up taking the tower. So, yeah. I'm, I'd say I'm happy with our game today. Awesome. And what's kind of been the situation with you guys adjusting, having Kane and uh, Peek and Wolf in and switching a little back and forth in the jungle? Has that been hard to adjust? Or are you guys just going with the flow? Uh, a little bit, because when we had Peckin and Shrimp, I, I stepped into more of the primary shot calling role. But now that we have Kane and Shrimp back, Kane is a lot better at leading us. And I feel like since he's more experienced, he usually knows what to do best. So I've been taking more of a secondary shot caller, more of a can we do this, can we do that, rather than a we should do this, we should do that. Uh, in terms of academy teams, you guys have a fair amount of built-in experience. Obviously, Keen and Shrimp playing Dignitas, but you and No and Ari all playing together, uh, you know, previously in collegiate. So how how has it been, you know, sticking with that group of guys? Um, really good. I think a lot of people thought because we were from collegiate, we wouldn't do well, but. We originally, uh, you saw us playing with Peckin and with Shrimp, and we were still doing well, even though um, Shrimp wasn't always performing super well. Like, you could see that me, Terry, and No always stepped up, and Peckin as well. Big shout outs to him for subbing for us for those first uh, few weeks, I think. Awesome. And kind of for you coming into the Academy League here, what were, what did you feel like you kind of wanted to get out of this? What were your goals, your kind of achievements here throughout this season? I just really wanted to improve and prove that collegiate players could also play in high level games and improve to the level of LCS. I think I might not be there quite yet, but I'm definitely getting there. Well, you're making a good story for it. Congratulations on the win, JJ, and best of luck to FlyQuest as you guys move on in the season. Thanks, guys. So another win for FlyQuest. It's got to feel good and in the fashion it happened as well. That's something you can, you can never go back to these games and say, this is where we went wrong, but this is a beautiful game to say what we did right. Exactly. And I think that's what they did. Yeah. They're, they're getting overlooked a little bit with <laughs> like the team liquids and C9s running around to an extent. Uh, there hasn't been as much hype around this team, but they're quietly one of the best teams in Academy. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't like, you know, want to say, oh, it's because they have shrimp and keen. But like he said, they've been in and out a fair amount. They had to play with Peckinwolf and Absolutely. they've continued to win regardless regardless of who else is on the roster. So the collegiate guys definitely deserve a lot of credit for that. Well, taking it as it may come, and they are making it work. We've got one more game coming up, so do not go anywhere. Find you. When we return, Golden Guardians goes head-to-head -head with Echo Fox. Don't go anywhere. He's doing that. Oh! Gets out of one, but you got to remember there's a secondary part to it, and Kaizen is going to get knocked down by No. He, but it only sets up 100 Thieves to say, who's our next target in this fight? It's going to be No. He goes down immediately. What a shield on the Wyan. Holy crap, holy. But it still strips. He gets the smite down. He's good to go. And that is going to be key. Picking up a kill. Answered in by Lin Sanity. But it's not going to be enough. Getting some good damage onto that. They want to follow up the fight. They want to try to end the game. They are instantly going to be taking down Kitsuo. He was just saved with a sliver of health from the fight. Keen in a bad spot here. But he's able to deliver and kite out enough. Not really kite. Stand still and do the damage. <laughs> and the Hextech ultimatum.